a lazy person will always find an easy way to do a difficult task. What's a real life example of this? I was working as a stockboy in a supermarket and when we had to fill the milk cooler people would bust open a 12 pack of milk cartons and put them in one by one. On my first day I just placed the 12 pack in the cooler and cut the plastic off on one side with my box cutter and yanked it from under it and the look of the store manager and the other employee who was training me was pure bewilderment. From that day everyone did it my way. Start of lockdown. My 9 year old son was having worksheets emailed to complete at home. One day. Left him at the laptop doing his maths while I made some dinner with my 3 year old daughter. Walked into the living room with his dinner to find him asking the Alexa all of his maths questions. Worked as a laborer at a nursery one summer. Daily tasks included manually watering 15.000 plants each day. Put together a back of the napkin plan to build an irrigation system and spent the next few weeks building it with some money from the boss. That system is still running 15 years later and does all the work now. I did automate myself out of the job and had to find another eventually couple years later got my engineering degree. I'm convinced engineers are inherently lazy people that will spend a disproportionate effort to make things easier. We had to hold a thermometer in water in chemistry class. It probably was only 20 minute experiment but your arms get tired after a couple minutes and you can't let the thermometer touch the bottom of the pan or it won't get an accurate reading. So instead of sucking it up and just holding the thermometer. My lab partner built a contraption out of lab books and paper clips to somehow hold the thermometer in the water without it touching bottom. It was the stupidest looking thing you would ever see in a lab class and our professor even walked over and said if it looks stupid. Sounds stupid. But it works. Then it isn't stupid. My lab partner and I joked that he wasn't talking about the contraption but the intellect of my lab partner. I was a, paid, intern at a large company during one summer back home from college. My work 95% consisted of using SAP. Import to Excel. Clean data and generate reports, occasionally create some tools someone needed. In the first two weeks after getting a hang of my responsibilities. Writing all the Excel formulas needed. And basically automating 99% of my work. I was chilling. I went from actually working from 9 to 5 to maybe 1 hour tops a day. Finding. Importing. Cleaning. And reporting usually took hours but with all the formulas it took two minutes of clicking. I then helped the other cool intern get his shit set up so we could both just chill. We could take two hour lunches, paid for by the company, and nobody said anything cause we were just getting so much more done than the other interns. OFC I helped for special tasks when asked but those were simple 20 minutes tasks building something in Excel. Overall. Was the easiest slash stress less internship of my life. When I was in college I had a job at an Italian fast food place with a reputation for its breadsticks. They came in frozen and needed a bit to thaw. So we'd take a giant 3x4 feet aluminum baking sheet. Spread them out in a single layer with no spaces and cover it with a plastic bag. Then leave it sit in the walk-in overnight. The next day you'd have to get a pair of tongs and move each stick to a new tray. Turning them over. Then cover the new tray with the bag and let them sit on racks for a couple of hours before brushing on the garlic butter sauce. This was tedious enough that you'd usually be ready to brush the butter on the first tray as soon as you turned the last tray. I was given this task for the first time one morning and just did not want to deal with it. I realized if I put the second tray upside down on top of the first one then turned it over and took the first tray out. I got exactly the same results. Blew the boss's mind when I did the 3 hour job in about 15 minutes. I was given a $0.05 slash hour raise. Worked in a local adult education center. One of my main tasks was to make calculation about how many people enlisted for a course. How many of them got discounts, unemployed e.g. How many men slash women slash age etc. That was needed to calculate upcoming courses fees etc. That was my only work there and I hated it. This was in early 90s. So PCs were a thing in our offices but I had no idea how to write a program or use a database to use this information. Lucky as I am our center had an interesting policy, when you want to educate yourself. You can attend that class for free. And when it's during the work time. Then this is work time, as long as my supervisor is okay with that. She was. So I spent three months studying database structures. Scripting. Coding etc. 
I told my tutor what I want to do and he helped me to write a script that grabs all necessary informations from the course's database. Copy that into another database and then I went crazy and wrote code that was insane. I implemented what if scenarios thanks to filters. At the end I was able to do my work. That needed 6 HRS a day within 15 minutes. I mean. Before that it took e.g. An hour to have all the necessary informations to have a how many unemployed single parent women does it need to make the costs of that course even. I had everything back then. Now you want statistics how many single parent disabled foreign women at the age of 80 to 90 are needed for the next two years to keep the ornithology course running? Sure. No problem. Clickety click. Done. After that. I started the PC in the morning. Grabbed all the data. Ran my script. Was done within 15 minutes and then read the book I brought from home. At the end of the day I gave my supervisor several dozens of papers. Statistics. Predictions etc. and said that was a lot of work. And went home. My supervisor was super happy with me because I did so much more now and was super effective. Walkie talkies. In every job I've ever had these things make your day far less labor intensive if used correctly. An older company had a person dedicated to data entry which boiled down to copying and pasting portions of data from text files into spreadsheet and formatting into a report. The person originally doing this job spent a full 40 plus hours slash week doing it. But was not very computer literate. When they retired. The company hired someone with actual skills. The new hire convinced management to let her work remotely after getting up to speed on the job. The first week at home was spent automating the entire job. The remainder of their multi-year tenure with the company was spent doing whatever they wanted save the 10 to 15 minutes weekly to run their program and to answer the odd email here and there. All while getting paid full salary and benefits. They actually had to add in a few errors now and then to make it seem realistic. In Australia explorers discovered a mountain that was taller than MT Kosciuszko. Which was though to be the tallest mountain in Australia. Rather than cause confusion by telling everyone a new tallest mountain had been found. They simply named the new mountain MT Kosciuszko and renamed the original to something else. I was invited to my friend's yearly apple picking, it was a full day of apples and kids and filling a truck for cider. I'm lazy and suggested we make the process more efficient with tarps on the ground. We managed in two hours what historically took all day. We didn't even get to the picnic lunch. Essentially. I ruined apple picking. I knew a guy who had a low-level data slash reporting job. He had several daily slash weekly work responsibilities. Including a bunch of reports that needed quite a bit of tweaking from raw data to finished product. But like I said. Low level. We didn't find out until way later. But he had set up macros for each of his major responsibilities where he could. Once set up. He'd just run the macros to do his work. But then he'd, smartly, hold off on delivering the reports until just a little before the deadlines. He'd hit every assignment and was seen as reliable. He also would complain about the workload so people would leave him with that work. I doubt he did a full hour of work a day after he set up what he did. Eventually he left the job for one with better pay. But damn did he work lazy. Also. He was smart not to reveal until the end. Because had he told them about it he would have gotten a pat on the back and would have been given a whole other workload. On top of maintaining those macros slash etc. Dude milked the job. Not the other way around. I have a massive exercise to do at our year end, accountancy. My work previously got checked by another manager who spent over three weeks going over the data. Eventually she got shifted to another department and that workload fell on me. Basically self audit and then present the data to the actual auditors. My previous manager was absolutely shit at Excel. I didn't let on but I did all the audit on a separate file using simple, but out of the way, formulas. Not only did I reduce the task from three weeks to basically real-time checks, no time, but when I was told that I have to perform that exercise every month my job became a doddle. I didn't let on that everything was automated by SUMIFs. Indexing. Max values and range checks. Living the dream. Sorry if I rambled on. My boss put my name in for leading a project group shortly after I joined the company. I had no experience whatsoever about project managing yet he still demanded that I lead the group of 12 people. Always smarter guys, 
tech background and shit these guys are like magicians for me, and with way more time at the company. I'm a business guy who's too dumb for balance sheets that's why I'm in HR, and because I quite like the field the most. So we started the first meeting. I asked for everyone's plan. Experience and ideas. Gathered the different pros and CONS cross-checked with the budget we had. Put on a time frame with milestones to reach, around six months. Put invaluable people to consult at different steps. Why did I do that? Because I like organizing stuff and keep everyone on the same page and delegate to-dos. Got promoted because of the success of the project. I asked my boss why he put me in for it since I never done anything like that. He said because I complained in the first week that most of the work has way too wonky structure. No clear guideline and this could be improved heavily if we just take some time into it. And because I hated talking to others if I had questions and I wouldn't get a clear answer, like, ask 10 people the same question and you get 15 different answers. In the long run this would make us way more efficient and keeps everyone on the same page. All because I hated disorganized work. Well I worked in a graphics design studio as an intern. They mostly had me practice and do some basic stuff their head designers was too busy to do. One was a real estate ad. It had a few basic templates. But it was all kinds of scatterbrained. I would spend 5 to 10 minutes trying to find the right layer for all the pictures. And had to mess with way too much. So I made copies of the files. And made one for each template. I labeled everything. Made it so the images on top of each other wouldn't clip into the lower ones like the previous did so on. You could be in and out of the template in two to three minutes. Showed my boss the difference. And he had this face of well shit he said the next day that if I was a graduate he'd hire me. Because I was better than the people sending applications in. In short I made an overly complicated slash unorganized thing the opposite. And my boss was actually sad he couldn't hire me. Thanks for watching.